You're, 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 you're listening to the podcast for all of the news, notes, and breakdowns for your Ohio State Buckeyes. This is Sons of the Shoe with Nick Wilson and Spencer German. Sons of the Shoe rides again, Nick Wilson, Spencer German. How are you doing, everybody? Another loaded week in Columbus, literally loaded with talent. We're talking Julian Sand. We're talking Caleb Downs. Missed out on Caden Proctor. He's going to Iowa. But we got a full show to react to all of this. As always, we are a new podcast. So please make sure to follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. That includes Apple, Spotify, the free Odyssey app, 923thefan.com. And of course, you can also follow and comment on, on the show and follow along on 923thefan's YouTube page. But Today, big honor uh, uh, of somebody who I I love and just adore as a human being is going to be joining us, Spencer, to talk about the big news. Caleb Downs going to Columbus, Julian uh, saying going to Columbus, Bill O'Brien coming to Columbus as well to talk about all of it. We welcome on former Alabama safety, longtime NFL safety, now the SEC network, and he looks completely different. He did this to throw us completely off. It's Roman Harper. Rome, welcome to the show, man. What's good, boss? Um, Nick, thanks uh, Thanks for having me. And, yes, I do look completely different. I, I shaved. I was like, new year, new me. Um, but not really, though. It, now <laughs> I can't grow hair. It's just like I want to do something different. It's all good. Well, I got to say. I say and they don't let me. I'll be on TV. I don't get to, like, just do something drastic like this. So. It's like my wife is like, dude, I don't even recognize you. You're like a completely different person. <laughs> I think what's funny about this is, is that my my partner, Dustin Fox on 92 Through the Fan, doesn't grow a beard or doesn't like get like a uh, doesn't change his facial hair during the season. But usually it's because he's a fresh faced baby. Now you're like, they want me looking with that salt and pepper gigantic beard, man. I gotta say it works. I'm, I'm just saying, you do, look, you do look about 15 years younger though, which I, I probably isn't hurting too bad. No, man. You know the crazy thing is, I look like how I looked in high school. This is yeah. like high school going to college, Rome. That's what I look like right now. It's hilarious because uh, my wife kind of looks the exact same, and uh, me and her right now look like we did in high school when we dated. So it's just weird, but. Uh, my kids are just like, Dad, you look so young. It's just weird. But, hey, man, it's it's me, though. It's still me. I, I believe you. I believe you. Um, So I guess I actually want to say of all three moves from uh, Alabama to Columbus, Bill O'Brien, Julian Sayan, and Caleb Downs, which one surprised you the most? Uh, none of them. I guess uh, <laughs> Bill O'Brien, if anybody, because I, I just – I didn't know if he would go back to college. And uh, and Ryan Day seems to be the OC or the, the play caller already. So to see him bring in, I guess, a fresh face. And then how much power is he going to give Bill O'Brien over the offense uh, is what I would like to know with having him there. Because the quarterback, Julian saying, I, I assume Ohio State recruited him. So him not going back to the West Coast, he was already familiar. And, well, he clearly was cool with leaving the West Coast with him being from there, going to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, having Rose Bowl practice, being with that team, being on campus, and then transferring and then picking Ohio State. So uh, that's not a surprise. And then Caleb Downs, I kind of heard that oh, it was going to happen anyway. So that's just what it was. Uh, Roman, I guess with with Downs specifically, he's a he's a hell of a player, five star recruit. Both Bama and uh, both Bama and Ohio State recruited him. Obviously, just what type of player? What does he bring to the table that Buckeyes fans should sort of know? Uh, in all honesty, he's going to be the highest drafted defensive back at Ohio State in the last whatever years. And you guys got that via Alabama. So congratulations. So maybe you guys <laughs> might be able to call yourselves DBU again, but because that's a while. Been the case. I, yeah. yeah it's not been the case. And look, I, I've been I, wondering I where that playing, title was for a while. Now. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, it, it was a while where Ohio state was the, was the number one. I will give them credit. Trust me. I'm a DB. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to defensive back. So Ohio state had the title for a while. Alabama took it, and now it goes back to Ohio State because this kid is a young baller. Uh, he tackles well. He understands the game. He plays with a sense of enthusiasm. He knows how to tackle compressed space. Really great, uh, really good ball skills. He's a punt returner as well, so you get added value in the return game. Uh, don't let him 
don't let them house a return. Then he's only going to go up the boards even more. So uh, congratulations to them. And I only want what's best for him. Uh, the young man is a, is a great kid. Uh, his parents seem to be really good. Comes from from really good things. So, um, and the coaches were absolutely raved about him uh, from the moment that he stepped on the campus at Alabama. So, Ohio State's getting a really good player. And any, and I root for all these players. I don't care what university you go to. I, I like to see. I root for the players all the time. And so, when you see good ones, you cheer them on, and we all enjoy to watch them. So, they got a really good one there, and uh, it'll be fun. And uh, he clearly didn't want to go back to Georgia, which, as an Alabama fan. I'm happy about <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for you guys. Yeah, it's a win I'm, for us. I was fine. I'm like, if he's going to leave, I would love for him to go to Ohio State. That is awesome. So, um, yes, it'll be good. So when it comes to, um, you know, Ohio State fans, we also love to kind of look back and, and you know, go to the tape as it were. Is there a game that you can remember specifically if, if Ohio State fans want to see the full Caleb Downs that they should look to this last year and go back and just watch the game and watch his kids stand out or watch what he does best? I mean, just watch. I mean, you can go to the Rose Bowl. He's the best player. I mean, the last four to five games of the season, he was – I mean, Terry on Arnold is top tier, and he's a corner, so he impacts the game on less amount of plays. But that secondary of Alabama last year was why Alabama's defense had gotten so much better is because he steadily got better. Terry Aaron Arnold steadily got better. Um, Kool-Aid McKinstry got a little bit more consistent. And they just start using Malachi more smart, smarter as well. And you saw different games, even versus Georgia, who covered Brock Bowers in the slot. It wasn't a cornerback or Malachi Moore sometimes. It was Caleb Downs. So he plays good man-to-man -man coverage. He also tackles really well in space. So he's everything that you want. He's got the size, and he's just a freshman. So he's only going to get better uh, for the next couple of years while he's in college. I hope you guys paid him well. Yes, well, it's, we it's, likely did. <laughs> it's, it sounds like the money's really flowing right now. I, I actually, I, I, I will say this though: can I mean, can we just give you guys credit? Because Terrell Pryor back in the day kind of, kind of shook it all up back in the day. Him and Maurice Claret, who got caught with you know a really nice <laughs> system in his car when he was at Ohio State. Uh, it just you know they shouldn't have robbed him, but it's all good. I, I like Maurice; he's a cool cat, bro. I know a yeah. lot of these Ohio State guys. It's 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 interesting to go back to those two sort of players and see like the tipping point really of a lot of this. Um, and, and along those lines, I just want to ask more broadly about Saban's departure because I've kind of felt like the last couple, like the last week or so since the since the news came out, it it feels like there is sort of this colossal shift just in the overall culture of college football. And Ohio State seems to now be sort of jumping at the forefront of trying to embrace this almost new era. Just are you, Do you get that same sense? And, and what does his uh, retirement sort of mean for, for college football moving forward? Uh, well, Nick Saban changed college football. It was it, like when Nick got went back to Alabama, it was okay. You had four years to get your, your class and recruit guys in and, and be able to grow from within a program. And Nick, he changed the standard. The standard of winning eight, nine games in a season, no longer good enough. You get fired. You, you, if you don't beat the, the, the standard because Alabama was winning championship after championship after championship, the, the, the standard of college football and changed. I know all the power went down to the South in the S Southeastern Conference. Um, and then from there, it only grew and everybody was trying to compete and not only trying to put guys in the NFL – but also uh, winning championships. And, and now with the transfer portal, Ryan Day, he, he has to win these games. And with Jim Harbaugh probably more than likely going to the NFL, the Big Ten is back to be up for grabs. And so you anticipate Michigan taking a step back. Ryan Day has to take advantage of this because we all know Ohio State, whether you like to say the name Michigan or not, you still play them. And if you don't beat them, people get fired. It's the same thing at Alabama and Auburn. If you don't beat the rivalry, you don't get to keep your job long. I don't care what other games you win. Roman, I mentioned Bill O'Brien. He's the new offensive play caller. He's the new offensive coordinator in Columbus. You know, it's so funny because when he was hired here, people said, oh, Saban ran him off out of Alabama. And it's been interesting to kind of see how that's changed. I think the New England thing was a disaster, not the Alabama thing. I'm just curious, <laughs> like what, what, what was, how did, how did Bill fare in 
Alabama and and really his relationship with quarterbacks and the production got out of them. You know what? How how did Bill really feel fair in Tuscaloosa? You know, it, it's such a mixed bag of emotions because sometimes it's about who you follow up as well, and so and then it's also well, Nick's not allowing you to run your offense. It's Alabama's offense, so you're going to call my plays. And but I, I wish they would have ran a little bit more downhill stuff and do. But you also had Bryce Young, who was more familiar with shotgun. You also had a very explosive running back in Jameer Gibbs, which I wish you'd have just ran him a little bit more. How you see him doing and being a, you know, he's making running backs more popular again in the NFL right now. If he continues to go on this wave that he's on right now for Detroit, so uh, you had Jamison Williams. You had they had a lot of talent on that Alabama offense. I thought he fared well, but uh, all things credit, but it wasn't great because he also followed up Lane Kiffin that put up monster numbers and Brian, oh, Brian and didn't. They didn't win a championship. Lane Kiffin did. So that's the standard. That's what it, you're always measured up against when you're at Alabama. So if you hear the outside people, they're not going to have the best experience with him at offensive coordinator. It's because he followed up Lane Kiffin where you felt a complete change in offense from slowing it down, pat, like more run oriented to pass and winning a championship to what Bill O'Brien did, which did not win a championship. Back to some of the players who have obviously transferred recently, and, and Julian Sain was the big one over the weekend, the, the five-star, uh, number three overall player last year in, in, this, in this upcoming class. Um, it, what, is it, what, is, what is Ohio State getting in him from a quarterback standpoint? We know um, they, they were recruiting him from the beginning anyway, and they have Aaron Nolan who's committed this year as well, and all the reports are that he's going to stay and sort of try to duke it out. But is, is Sain a guy – I know they brought in Will Howard with the expectation he's going to start, but is he a guy that could compete really early for the starting job, or is it going to maybe take a year? You know what, Spencer? Man, dude, I'm being honest with you. Dude, I do not pay attention to high school players. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, I mean, we'll see. Good. Uh, yeah, he, he's the number one guy, so good luck with that. Um, I mean, he's there to compete. I, I appreciate that, so – Hey, look, man, uh, competition brings out the best in everybody. If he's going to play, he's going to play. I, I like the thing about today's college football is that the, like, you don't have to be a, a four-year senior guy. Like, you know, the best players play, and movement happens. And because movement happens, everybody's trying to play and get on the field. So he went to where he thought he had a chance to go and play and compete. And so for that alone, I applaud him for that, and good luck to him. Uh, all I want, like I said earlier, is to cheer for these players and hopefully successful no matter what he's doing. It really has been the Alabama to Columbus pipeline because <laughs> we also got Seth McLaughlin, and I know you know he was the center for the playoff game. There was a lot of uh, things said about him because of some missed snaps. I'm just curious, how much of him leaving Alabama do you think was owed to some of the backlash to that one game, or do you think he's just kind of uh, – do you think he's a better player than that one game would let on, do you think? So the, they had had inconsistent snaps all year long. I mean, that one was just an, an enormous amount of bad snaps in one game. So, And he had his hands full. So um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not him. I haven't talked to McLaughlin. So uh, it's unfortunate it happened. But, hey, man, these fans are brutal, all right? It's just what it is. When you put that jersey on and you're in the arena, you open yourself up to this lifestyle. And so I'd never apologize for fans being fans unless when they cross over the line. But internet bullying is real. And if you get if you are shaken or moved by the booze, then I don't want to hear you loving all everybody when you're getting the roars of the crowd. You you take it both ways. You can't be shaken on either one of them. You can't believe all the love when they give it to you, and you can't believe the naysayers and the booers when they give it to you as well. That's part of the game. And if you're going to be a professional, you're never going to be perfect. You're going to have those things. And Twitter is going to be Twitter. At the end of the day, it, it is what it is. And he's moved on. Hopefully he has a, a better last kind of couple of years of his career. And he finishes off strong. And so that will be part of his journey and part of his story. Now, what he does with the rest of this story, because he still is a young man and has a lot of book left to write, then that would be determined. And that's up to him and how he takes this moment and goes on from it. 
you mentioned how, how brutal the fans can be. And I mean, it's not just the SEC. It's not just Bama. We see the same thing at Ohio State, obviously, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> we, we get it. Um, but, but I guess – what... get rid of Ryan Day and he loses one game a year. Oh, yeah. He's I mean, got to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta go. We've been we've One been game fight, year. we've been fighting those people on the YouTube comments since uh, the, the, the yeah. end of the season. So, um, I, I guess what has been the overall reaction uh, amidst Bama fans, but also just in the SEC, sort of seeing this shifting of power and seeing the the players that are entering the portal and going elsewhere. Obviously, most notably uh, Columbus. That you know, everybody, no nobody's beyond this. Okay. Nobody is beyond this. Everybody thinks Alabama. Look, I wouldn't have said Alabama when Alabama was not the dominant force that they are. And so uh, time is delicate. Uh, coaches matter in these sense of times. And um, Nick Saban matter. These A lot of these kids, they go to Alabama to be coached by Nick Saban. Um, and when I went to school, I, I loved, I liked the coach, but it was still a great university. We still had 12 national championships. Now we have 18. And so – because of what Nick's not no bragging though, but we got 18. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you how much things have changed. Yeah, I'm just telling you. And so these kids don't go to Alabama just for the the lore, the legend, the 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 you know the backstories, all the championships of the past. No, they're going there right now to get the championships of today. And so that's how much time has changed and what Nick has been able to do and build. And so a lot of these kids, when Nick is no longer there, what's the staying factor? So. That's half of it. And also, you know, it's also the times we live in. Uh, but as far as everybody on the outside, I mean, Alabama fans, of course, are a little bit nervous and they haven't felt this way in a long time. And understandably so. And uh, things have never been like this because they had Nick and it's been so consistent. But then you also have fans on the outside. It's a lot of people that are happy. It's power players that are probably on campus that haven't been able to say a word about the football program because nobody's going to talk back to Nick. Nick has had the power over everything the last 12 and a half, 13 years. And so now you have people that have to get to make more decisions and they like that because power is what it is. And then you also have other teams like Auburn that are happy. I had a friend of mine said, he said, dude, this feels like, I don't know if it felt like this, but he's like, I lived through like, like when the communists, the Ber Berlin wall just fell for us, you know? Like we got a chance, <laughs> oh, like we God. are back. <laughs> like I lived through 17 years of having no chance. Like, we, we were never – like, we were always behind the eight ball. As long as Nick Saban was there, we it, they won four times in 17 years. That's not a good feeling as a rivalry game. You know that. And so you also have LSU fans. They're like, oh, man, we're, dude, we're good. George is like, Kirby's the guy. The one person that could beat Georgia is no longer there. Georgia beats everybody but one person. and Well, one team because of one person. And so all these people are back alive again. And so – it's going to look and feel a little bit differently. Alabama hired a great coach as far as record, the things he's been to accomplish. But, man, the, the actual odds of replacing the GOAT, though, are so hard. The odds are not in your favor as far as history goes and have to do this job. Rome, it's great to talk with you, man. It's good to see you, even though you look wildly different and completely threw <laughs> me off. But no, seriously, you're one of the good dudes, not just in football, but in, in the man, media. I and I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much. No, nah, man, thank you guys for having me, man. Uh, good luck, man. And uh, I'm, I'm a roll tie guy, but I did learn from my boys, all my teammates, Malcolm Jenkins, Teddy G, Ted Ginn, yep. uh, OH, OH, guys, OH. I know. Uh, good stuff, Rome. <laughs> Be good. Thanks, buddy. That was so cool, man. We we uh we obviously have a lot to react to that, uh, Spencer. But uh, we uh I just I really love me some Roman Harper. He was always one of the nicest guys. I I knew Roman from down in Charlotte, and just anytime you needed something, uh, Roman was just the best I, of people. He was he was great. Um, I mean, if there's some reason to have him on again at some point off season during the season, if Alabama and Ohio State cross paths in the playoff next year or something like. Sign me up. He 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 was he was he was great. It was great to get his insight on things, and, and he seems like an awesome person. So, all right, guys, we are going to react to what Rome had to say, and obviously the latest in Columbus, including Julian saying hashtag just saying. Uh, more on the Caleb Down stuff, but first a quick word from our sponsor.